everyone, this is Andrea. Um, I'm here to talk about living with arthritis and depression and mourning that goes along with that. Now when I'm talking about arthritis, in this case I'm talking about um, psoriatic arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. These are, these are the types of arthritis that um, are an autoimmune disease. They attack your joints systemically, like throughout the body, and they break down the joints. It's um, different from osteoarthritis, which is uh, prolonged use of the joints over the years. It causes damage. It's still painful, but um, usually in certain areas, like the knees or you know, depending on the kind of things you did throughout life. Well, anyway, uh, the process that I went through when I first learned that I had psoriatic arthritis is that, well, at first I thought, well, you know, let's see what the doctor has to say. Maybe, maybe it's very um, controllable or curable, maybe, I was thinking, but especially since you see these you see these commercials by the pharmace pharm pharmaceutical companies that show people running around with their grandchildren and, you know, going back to a normal life because they're on these medicines that lower their immune system. It's all very promising looking when you watch it, but when it gets down to the nitty gritty, at least for me, when... I spoke to my rheumatologist and I went on some of these medications. Uh, it just slows down the progress. It slows down the progress of damage to your joints. You may already have a lot of damage to your joints, such as I have. Um, I have ankle joint damage, knee joint damage, one of my hips. I have a shoulder that's pretty damaged. Um, I've had to have shots in there to be able to move it. Um, anyway, besides, besides that, it just slows down the progress of the disorder. Now, for some people, that may mean, yeah, they can run around and do these things, depending on, you know, the actual progress of the disease as far as they've gotten. But for most people, it just slows down how fast you're going to need, you might need procedures done, like I'm supposed to... The doctor thinks I'm going to need knee surgery, knee replacement in the next couple of years, which I am not looking forward to, even though everyone says it's fine, it's, you know, whatever. Anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, so when you get to that point where you realize it's not going to be, I'm not going to be able to go back and run through the woods like I used to, or... I won't be able to do the things that, all the things I could do when I was camping before, like lay down on the ground and get back up <laughs> without help. Um, it could be, it could be other things. It could be like when I used to, cro I mean, I still crochet. I haven't done it recently, but I used to crochet so fast, like I could make things really fast and I liked sit if i was watching tv or a movie i could i could crochet something now it's like maybe i can do a row or two um i've had to learn to do things differently but in the in the beginning it's really hard because you start at least for me i got really depressed i didn't want to see anybody um i felt really sorry for myself <laughs> which i didn't think would be, I didn't think that would be me. I thought, oh, if something like that ever happens to me, I'll be graceful. I'll be one of those people other people look up to. They're like, oh, she's so good at dealing with this. In the beginning, it's never that way. It's, um, it's very difficult. And I was ashamed that I felt these things. I was ashamed that I was depressed. And, um, feeling bad about myself so that made it even harder for me to reach out to people 
And then I got to the point where I realized I'm never going to get past this if I don't let myself mourn for the things that I used to be able to do. And I let myself go through that process. Uh, let myself feel those things. Uh, I had to still, still talk to my husband, um, not completely let him out of the loop, you know, because people will feel pushed away. Uh, we tried to learn things about the disease together and come up with coping mechanisms together, and I think that helps. You can't take it personally when people don't understand. Nobody knows, nobody knows how much pain it is and how if you go to grab something and your hand does not hold it because, and it's not the muscles, like you'd think. Part of you feels like if I just, maybe I'll do a little better workout. The workout's good. It's good for your muscles and it helps support your joints. But sometimes the joints are not, like if I, can't, if I grab a, a heavy tray and I need to put it in the oven, I've dropped them so many times because just things, things aren't connected that used to be connected in your hands, in your, in your knees, in your, in your wherever, in your ankles. Um, what else was I going to say about that? Well, uh, something that I did learn to do is, I did, sometimes you get very depressed and sometimes you do have to see a doctor or a therapist. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, most people need to talk to someone and you don't always have the people around you that understand what you're going through or or have the tools to teach you coping mechanisms and stuff like that. And I was lucky because I had found this really good therapist. She used to be a nurse, so she knew a lot of things dealing with, you know, people dealing with um, losing the ability to do things they used to be able to do. She told me, try to focus on the things you can do. Not the things you can't do. That sounds, you know, that sounds logical. Like you'd come up with that yourself, but not when you're in the middle of feeling sorry for yourself. So I wrote a list of things I can do. Some of it was stupid stuff, you know, like, I can walk. <laughs> Don't underestimate being able to walk. <laughs> okay, I have seen people just decide to stop walking and everything went downhill from there. I mean, whatever you can do, and it's not hurting you, do it. You know what I mean? I don't mean I can walk in a marathon, or I can't even walk for long periods at a museum or something like that, but I can walk. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, I wrote down things I still can do, and then I tried to focus on things I can do that I enjoy doing. And then she said, you know... Now's a good time to try things you've never tried before. Activities you thought, oh, I'll try that someday. You know, maybe I'll try to paint or um, I'll go to a class on this or check out this kind of club or you like doing things outdoors. Try a different thing outdoor that, you know, maybe it's something you never did before or it's similar but maybe in a support capacity, you know, um, such as I like to fish. Uh, I can't fish in the same places I could fish before, you know, when you kind of go down a bank and uh, you get nestled in and you find fish, they're all going under this one root section. No, I can't do that. Um, I mean, I could if people want to help me in and out or if I feel like that. I don't feel like that. I don't feel like it ends up being too painful and too... Anyway, there are other places I can fish or I can help people like if my son or my son's girlfriend, they want to fish. My son fishes. He's fished for a long time. But I can help them. I can say, here's, you know, this is the best way to bait for this kind of hook. This is the kind of bait. I can help them with I can fish still too. I can fish like from a pier or um, a nice bank that I can get to. My point is, 
you find what you can do still, and then you look for things you can do that you've never tried before. Um, it's easy to get depressed. I mean, I guess you might be able to tell I'm kind of tearing up a little. Because, you know, now I'm thinking of things that I used to be able to do. I used to be able to go caving. I can't go caving anymore. I loved it. But I have those memories. And believe me, I try to get everybody I know to get into caving. Because I think it's wonderful and relaxing. And you're really, like, in nature. But you have to use so many muscles and joints for the kind of caving I did, you know, climbing into things. It's not the kind where you kind of walk in and someone says, and to your left, we have this kind of stalactite or whatever. Now this is more physical. Um, but you know, there's things, there's things you can, my point is there's things you can still do or there's new things you can try. And, um, I've been trying new things lately. I recently, I mean, I've shot a, I've shot a rifle before and I really enjoyed that because you can take your time. You're supposed to take your time, especially with a, um, a single action shotgun, everything, you know, the more points of, I forget what it's called, points of connection you have. Like for such as some people, they put their, I'm not gonna go into the details of it, okay? But for suffice it to say, you can have physical problems and be able to shoot a, sh uh, a rifle. And I mean on a rifle range. I'm not, I'm not a hunter. I don't have anything against that. I just, it's just not me. Uh, but anyway, I went to a shooting range recently and shot a couple different guns. And I don't know if I'll do it again, but it was, it was interesting to try. And that was my point is that to try new things. There's something exciting about it. There's something different and interesting. And that's, you know, that's what I want to leave you with today. And really, if you are depressed, um, I hope you'll talk to somebody, um, a doctor or a therapist or a good friend. And um, I'll talk to you soon. I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.